Ladies and gentlemen, this player from the start of his career in minor hockey to current day was destined to make a difference in the hockey universe, uh, either as a player in management, overall as a, as a great, great ambassador for the game. Uh, but Jerry Mean, 6'2", 200 pounds, your prototypical 1960s, 1970s center, first came to major prominence with, with the uh, Neil McNeil Ontario Midget Squad of the MTJHL, which eventually let him be drafted in the fourth round, 21st overall. Uh, NHL uh, draft. One of the first major stars to come out of the midget now uh, to make the NHL. Now he attended Neil McNeil High School where he played again for the MTJHL squad and that team also took part in the 63 Memorial Cup. Now the native of Newmarket uh, did everything in hockey, got his debut in the NHL on December 1st, 1968 playing for Toronto against New York. He also played for Washington for a number of years, was one of their top players. Now he also played in the WHA for Cincinnati. Final NHL totals for Toronto, Philadelphia, Buffalo, Vancouver, Atlanta, and Washington. 180 goals, 243 assists for 423 points. Played only two years in the NHL uh, playoffs uh, with one assist in 10 games. Now again, war number 27, uh, Frank Mahavlis is old number for 26, number 23 for Philadelphia, 15 for Buffalo where he was captain, 26 for Vancouver, number 10 for Atlanta, and number 14 for Washington. Again, he won the Memorial Cup with the Marlies in 64 and 67. He was named to the OHA Junior A All-Star First Team in 67. He also won the CHL Adams Cup playing in the Myers with Tulsa in 68. He played in his first game in Buffalo Sabres history on October 10, 1970 at Pittsburgh and registered the first assist in Sabres history with a lone helper on a goal by the other Jim Watson for a 1-0 lead at 5-0-1 in the second period. Meehan also took the first minor penalty in Sabres history at 7:54 of the first. He scored his first NHL goal in his 43rd NHL game by beating Les Binkley in Buffalo's October 18, 1970 game versus Pittsburgh. He was also a Hart Trophy candidate in 1971 after scoring 24 goals and adding 55 points. Again, he served as Buffalo captain for three seasons from November 71 to October 74. Now, his big goal, of course, was a counter against Bernie Perra from 80 feet out for the winning goal with only four seconds remaining in Buffalo's 1971-72 regular season finale versus the Flyers on April 22nd, 72, and this goal prevented the Flyers from reaching the playoffs. So that's the big Buffalo-Philadelphia rivalry, which was rekindled in 75. He left Buffalo ranked third on the team's career scoring list and was the last of the team's 70 expansion draft picks. Still playing with the Sabres. He became the first Washington Capital player to win the official NHL Player of the Week by scoring two goals and five helpers over the week and in January 28, 77. He scored a career high 64 points in 77, including 43 points over the season's final 40 games. He became the first Washington player to score 100 points in the Capitals. He did it on November 9, 77 with a power play goal at Detroit. Now, you got to keep up with this. He moved quite a bit. He was traded on March 2, 69 by Toronto with Mike Byers and Bill Sullivan to Philadelphia in exchange for Brett Selby and Forbes Kennedy. On June 10, 70, he was claimed from the Flyers by Buffalo in expansion draft. On October 14, 74, he was traded by Buffalo with Mike Robotai to Vancouver in exchange for Jocelyn Gavrema and Brian McSheffery. On March 9, 75, he was traded by Vancouver to Atlanta in exchange for Bob Murray. On January 26, 76, he was traded by Atlanta with Jean Lemieux and Buffalo's 76 first round pick, previously obtained for the Sabres, to Washington exchange for Bill Clement, a very controversial deal. And on December 4, 78, his pro hockey rights were sold by Washington to Cincinnati of the WHA, where he played two games. Now, Meehan's uh, work in the uh, 
uh, after hockey has also been very significant. He was named by Buffalo Sabres GM Scotty Bowman as Buffalo's assistant GM in July 84, becoming the first former Sabres player to work in Buffalo's front office. He remained that position until December 22nd, 86, because Bean was a very strong player in relation to uh, teammates and also brought it over to player development. He was named Buffalo's GM on December 22nd, 86, and added the title of Team VP during the Buffalo's Executive Vice President of Sports Operations in July, July 30th, 1893, and held that position through the 95 season. Now, playing with a myriad of teams in minor hockey and minor pro, including Toronto, Rochester, Tulsa, Phoenix of the WHL, where he played the full season, uh, Seattle of the WHL, and Cincinnati of the WHA. Sorry, he played the full season with Seattle. Now, he was also a learned scholar. He attended University of Toronto and Canassus or Canassus College during his playing days and returned to Canassus after retirement in 79 to complete his bachelor degree. And he also received his law degree from the University of Buffalo in 82. Now, again, he took a job with a Buffalo law firm of Cohen, Swados, Wright, Hannafin, Bradford, and Brett upon his graduation in 82 and admittance to the New York State Bar in 83. Some of his work he did there involved writing contracts uh, for players on behalf of the Sabres. Admitted to the Ontario Bar in 1998, he also served as an adjunct professor of sports law at Buffalo's Canasas College from 85 to 97. He went into sports management consulting in 97, founding Cardinal Sports Management in Richmond Hill, Ontario, and serving as chairman of the board. The company helped mark the PointStreet.com real-time scoring software to hockey teams throughout the U.S. Also continued to practice law at the firm of Hiscock and Barkley LLP in Richmond Hill. Now, very, very uh, well regarded by the WHA. He was selected by the Sharks in the 72 draft. Now, the big line he played with in Washington, of course, was Maritime Sensation Bill Riley, Riley and U.S. Uh, sensation Craig Patrick in 77. He was also tied for second in voting for Sporting News NHL Executive of the Year with Buffalo in 88. And uh, again, he started his career as a left wing despite playing center and played exclusively there at that position until the 71 season. Now, he led Washington with six game-winning goals during the 77 season to tie his career high. That was the year where Washington was making the big comeback. Now, he served as chairman of NHL General Managers Committee in 92 and 93. Uh, the other big line were Washington, of course, with Blair Stewart and Harvey Bennett for Washington at 76 campaign. Uh, big seven power play goals for the Capitals in 78. He was also uh, a coach on the side. He ran a hockey school in Buffalo during the summers of 74 through 76. Now, with the Capitals, he had four two-goal games in 76 and played point on the power play. Uh, defenseman, you know, left winger. Now, he led Washington with four two-goal games in 76, and again, uh, uh, a strong player on the on the the the, the, uh, the power play side. He was inducted, of course, in the Tobacco Sports Hall of Fame with his great NHL counterpart, uh, Brendan Shanahan. Now, talking about his work outside of hockey, uh, Meehan's years as a general manager were marked by the the next year as the NHL most improved team, 21 higher points in the standings. Again, uh, 96 years
Now he played with Tulsa, 31 goals in 68. Uh, broke through with Toronto in uh, uh, 69. the Flyers for 12 games in that campaign after the, uh, the shift the trade but with the Totems one of their best seasons ever 1970 he had 53 points in 67 games first season with Buffalo he's not his rookie campaign because he played with uh, the Flyers and uh, Toronto 24 goals in 77 games including 55 points 73 a big year with Buffalo 31 goals and 60 points and played six games in the playoffs with Buffalo that year. Now the, the uh, changeover to Vancouver wasn't a good fit for him, and he found up found his way all the way to Atlanta. Now when he arrived back with the Capitals, uh, that's where I think his best overall production was. A team leader, 64 points in that 77 campaign, and again the move to the Stingers in uh, 1979 to uh, to. Uh, take over. Now, uh, he wasn't the first captain, of course, for the Sabres. That was Floyd Smith. He was succeeded by Jim Schoenfeld. And GM of the Ranger, uh, the Sabres, he was succeeded by the great John Muckler. And John did a lot of great work with the Sabres as well. So, in the history of Buffalo hockey, I would consider uh, Jerry Meehan a top uh, uh, 20 uh, player and developer because what he did for the Sabres on and off the ice, he gave them legitimacy, legitimacy with the French Connection and the other key players, including Tim Horton. And when he became management, used his legal skills, he was a player's uh, lawyer, a player's GM. And bringing all those top players with the Sabres, 93 was a very good year. And the benefits of his hard work and Bowman's hard work previously, yeah, I would have bet if he would have bet Montreal that year, he could have went on a cup run. But the Sabres again, one of the best teams of the 70s and 80s and 90s, not winning a Stanley Cup. And Bowman's efforts and Mean's efforts, Sabres have always been a big team in Canada, and Jerry Mean was a part of that. And again, uh, will he make it to the Hockey Hall of Fame down the road? Who knows? Uh, a lot of people say he has the uh, overall numbers to get in the builder category and I think he should be looked at because of all the players he helped develop. The Sabres were a much better team overall with the players he brought in and I really think he deserves recognition. If Ken Holland can get in, Jerry Meehan should definitely get in. Uh, maybe under uh, 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 do you need a veterans committee for the uh, the uh, uh, the players and GMs that are co combination like Jerry Meehan I really don't think anybody would argue that Jerry Meehan again one of the most important figures in Buffalo Sabres history going on and off the ice and what he did for Washington as well is very important because he stabilized the franchise because when they started they couldn't score a goal and when he arrived uh, Bob Sirwa and different people they could really put the puck in the net so ladies and gentlemen if you like what we're doing with our Buffalo Sabres podcast let us know when to like, comment, subscribe and don't forget uh, these players like Jerry Mean of the 1960s and 70s need to be recognized and saluted because they formed the foundation of the modern NHL we see now thanks for listening, bye